Jay, I just I just uh, got dumped by somebody. I love them so much. We were talking about getting married and having kids. It's the end of the world. What do I do? Well, I've been there a few times and it fucking sucks bad. However, this may be the best thing that's ever happened to you. I know it was for me, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, here we go. Excuse me, I'm doing stuff here. I fell in love at 19. My first girlfriend, her name's Annette. I was head over heels for her, and we were inseparable. And we were talking about our wedding day. We were looking at wedding dresses and magazines and shit like that. And, and she was going to school and I was working. And one day my dad said to me, he said, hey, I just got offered a really good job in Washington State. And your mom and I, we're out of here. You can stay if you want. You're 19 years old. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do or anything, but you're more than welcome to come with us. And he, you know, and it's a tough decision. So Annette and I talked and she said, well, how about we do this? How about I finish school? You go up there, get a job, start saving money and move me up and I'll come up there. And my parents were cool with that. They liked her. And I said, okay, so that was the plan. I packed up all my shit in an 83 Toyota Corolla with Guns N' Roses stickers on the back and uh, drove up to Redmond, Washington. And I got a job at an equestrian center, big fucking place. And my day started at 4.30 in the morning. I was in the freezing cold, shoveling horse, muck and stalls, shoveling horse shit. And the pay sucked. And um, the guys I worked with didn't speak English. So I didn't have any friends and that was a bummer but um, I'm saving up money and this is before there's like no internet really <laughs> no cell phones any of that shit I'd write letters to her I'd write two letters a week and I would tell her about my day what's going on up here oh you're gonna love it it's great blah 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 I racked up a long distance bill from our landline, like 300 bucks and shit. And my mom's like, I hate to tell you this, but you gotta, you gotta start paying for this long distance shit. So it, it's really tough when you love somebody, you can't see them every day and you can't talk to them every day. That's how, that's how it was for me when I was 19. And I, you know, we were talking on the phone and she said, look, this is starting to get unbearable for me. And I'm like, well, yeah, it is for me too. And she said, I talked to my mom and dad, and they said that you could come down here and live with us in the downstairs bedroom. And you got to get a job and everything, and then we'll, when I'm done with school, we'll load up the truck and your car, and we'll head up to Washington. I said, okay, well, that sounds like a good plan. So, again, I packed up my shit. Oh, before I, left, before I moved down there, right before I left, uh, Kurt Cobain died, and I told her about it. And she said, well, what happened? It's weird to be up there in Washington, like not far from Seattle when that happened. That was very surreal. And I told her, I said, well, he shot himself in, in the head with a shotgun. And she said, how the hell do you manage to do that? And I never thought of that. I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, well, think about it. How the hell are you gonna shoot yourself in the head with a shotgun? With a pistol, it's a different story, but with a shotgun or a rifle or something, it's like impossible. She said, something's up with that. And I'm like, whoa. I never, I never thought of it that way. Anyway, so I loaded up all my shit and I drove through the night and I got down to Thousand Oaks, moved in with her, and I got a job at a Blockbuster video. And she's like just killing it in school, trying to hurry up and graduate. And before you know it, we're not really getting along anymore. We start having like little stupid arguments about shit and it just is like, what's going on here? Long story short, she dumped me. I'm living at her parents' house and my whole world was flipped upside down. It's like, what the fuck do I do now? I'm completely lost. I don't know where to go, what to do, what the fuck. 
I was so fucking bummed out. All I wanted to do was just sleep. When I'm sleep, I'm not sad. That's how... It, it, it was a bad breakup. I'll spare you the details of it, but it was fucking bad. I mean, nothing, nothing got physical or anything like that. I was just fucking so devastated and heartbroken. And I knew it was over. I didn't want to get back together with her. I just wanted... I just wanted the heartbreak to just end. I just wanted... I just wanted that to just stop. So my friend Steve, uh, who I used to dine and ditch with at Denny's and play hockey with and stuff, his sister married a guy that had a a, a business, a, like a like a trucking business down there. And I was talking to him, and he said, "Dude, you know what? If you need a place to stay, you could live in the you could live in the tow yard." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Well, on the other end of that property, there was a couple office units there. Uh, commercial uh, units he said you can live in there and pay us rent I'm like okay so I got there opened up the gate got to the other end of the lot and I'm loading up all my stuff into this place and it's concrete floors fluorescent tube lighting not only did I just get my heart stepped on but I'm moving into a junkyard so that was that was that just added to like my sadness and, <laughs> and everything and there's a Rottweiler there. He was the junkyard dog, big, huge dog. And he was so happy. His little tail nub was just wagging back and forth. And I didn't want to pet him because he's covered in dirt and oil and shit. And he would run off and grab something, like a piece of a wreck car, come back and drop it. And he'd just be so happy. When I was done loading up all my stuff in the house, the house, the fucking office unit, um, yeah, there are bars on the one window and everything. And the only way you could get in is through the gate that's covered in barbed wire and everything. When I was done lo- putting everything inside, he, he, he'd been gone for a while. He comes back with something in his mouth. I'm like, okay, what's this? He plopped it like two inches from my feet. It was a potato bug. Now, I don't know if you saw that video of... Uh, the camping trip from hell the when I went camping with her we had a potato bug come inside the tent and I shot it and the fact that this dog went out and found a potato bug and dropped it at my feet it reminded me of her <laughs> so I had to do a lot of uh, a lot of self analyzing and things like okay so she dumped me and the, the, she had some reasons and stuff why she why we broke up why she wanted to dump me and at the time it just wasn't registering but i learned a lot about myself and my behavior in the relationship that i that i was in i was way too clingy i followed her around like a puppy um it, it just it, i she was my life. I didn't have a life. She was my life. I stopped hanging out with my friends. I stopped doing the things I love to do so I could spend time with her and do shit with her. And it got to a point where I was just smothering her and I was suffocating her and she had enough. And she's like, fuck, I can't do this anymore. I didn't, I, I couldn't understand it at the time. But looking back, it's like, okay, this is what not to do. I mean, she had, she wasn't perfect herself, don't get me wrong, but um, it's just one of those things where it's like, you don't know about these things until you go through it and it, and it fucking sucks. And we were together for, I don't know, two and a half years or whatever. It took me fucking like four or five years before I decided to like try dating again. Because I was that scared that I would get my heart broken again. And, and I decided to kind of date here and there. And then I met Michelle. And I'm thinking, okay. And she's way smarter than me. Way smarter than me. And she would often be like, why don't you just put your wall down? Let your guard down. And... And just open up to me and blah 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 and I'm like okay so I fell in love with Michelle 
Now the problem with Michelle is that she had some self-esteem issues and shit like that herself. And um, she was living in Orange County. She's an IT chick. Fucking made good money. Real successful. But it turned out she was fucking everybody. <laughs> and it's like, look, I don't want to be with somebody that's cheating on me. She's, and she's like, I'm trying to discover who I am as a person and explore this and blah, blah, blah. You should be supportive of me. And I'm like, okay. So she convinced me it's my fault for not, for not being supportive of her while she was out fucking other people. That's how fucking manipulative she was to me. And she just whittled my, the self-esteem and the confidence that I built up after Annette started getting chipped away by Michelle. Finally, I fucking had enough. Uh, she came with me. We were up in Oregon at a jou at the Cor in Corvallis at the Shrewsbury Festival, putting on a jousting show, and I fucking dumped her. I dumped her that weekend. <laughs> I had enough of it. I'm like, it's fucking over. And I remember getting a whole bunch of beer, and uh, I tried to get King drunk. King uh, was a uh, 19 hand shire, one of the horses we used to joust on, joust with. I'm like, all right, King, we're getting fucking hammered tonight, buddy. I don't know where Michelle went. I didn't give a fuck. But I tried to get this horse drunk. He's my drinking buddy. I remember passing out. I, I passed out in the stall. And, uh,. The next morning, the sun hit me in the face. I woke up. I'm like, fuck, I'm laying down in dirt and everything. I look up, and King is standing over me. I'm looking at his belly. And one of two things uh, popped in my head as to why he did that. He's either, like, watching over me, <laughs> protecting me from, like, whatever, or he's about to take a piss on me or, or something like that. So, um... I think she, I don't know, how, I, I flew back from Portland without her, and uh, two days later, was it two days later or a day after I got back from, from that in LA, I'm getting ready for work. I got the TV on so I can listen to the traffic, see how bad it is. Uh, I'm, I'm in the bathroom, but I'm listening to the news, and i um, they said that uh, the World Trade Center is on fire. And I'm like, oh, fuck, that sucks. And they're talking about how bad it is. They said a plane hit it. And I'm like, how can somebody fly their fucking plane into a building that fucking big? <laughs> that doesn't seem like an accident. At that point, I'm done brushing my teeth. And I go in, in the living room, and I'm watching the TV. I'm like, holy shit, that looks bad. The second plane hit. I saw it live on, on the on TV. I'm like, oh my god. This is not an accident. This is fucking intentional. This is crazy. I'm trying to make sense of all this shit. And at that time nobody knew anything. We didn't nobody knew anything. But it uh, we knew it was an attack at that point. It's like, okay, there's no coincidence here. This is bad. This is fucking bad. Phone rings. It's Michelle. And she said, she's crying. Are you watching the news right now? And I'm watching the, the towers about to fucking fall down. And what pops in my mind? Why is this bitch fucking calling me? I said, didn't I fucking tell you to never call me again? I don't care if there's a fucking terrorist attack and the world's on fire. Go fuck yourself. And I hung up the phone. So, it took me a while to get over that fucking bitch. What did I learn out of that? When you see some red flags in somebody, don't tolerate that shit. Fucking move on, man. So, what did we learn from Annette? Don't be clingy. <laughs> don't be smothering. Have your own life. What did we learn from Michelle? 
If she wants to go fuck other people, fine. Keep it casual. Don't fall in love with her. I just really wanted to love somebody and, and be loved at the same time. So at this point, I'm like, all right, you know what? Fuck women. They're all the same. <laughs> I can't stand them. I'm just going to pay the field and blah, blah, blah. So now at this point, at this point in the story, I'm living on my sailboat and my jobs are pro wrestling, jousting and stunt work. And I'm living a life and I'm, I'm dating, I'm dating, but I'm telling her, I tell everybody the same thing. Every girl, like on date two, I, I'd say, look, I got my life exactly how I want it. I'm happy. I'm doing my thing. If you're looking to get married and have kids one day, I'm not the guy for you. I'm just not. That's not going to happen with me. So, that being said, if you want to end this right now, that's fine. I do like your company. I think you're pretty cool. But I get it. I don't want to waste your time or mine. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, they're like, wow, thanks for being upfront and honest. I wasn't just looking to get laid. You know, that wasn't it. Oh fuck, I don't want to fuck up the camera again. So, now, now there's Lindsay. Lindsay was a guy that would uh, always be at the rent fairs and stuff like that. And we always hung out. She'd always hang out with us backstage when we're jousting and and everything and she was fucking funny drop dead gorgeous and her and I sh shit I'm gonna unplug this camera and plug it back in come on come on load up load up load up load up, load up. there we go um she's beautiful smart witty funny and her and I just really fucking got along well, and it's like it, it was. It, it seemed like it'd be inevitable. It's like okay, this is it. This is the one. She's living up in Sacramento at the time and shit, and uh, I'd fly up there and see her. We start seeing each other, and there's a the whole thing. It's like I love you. I can't wait to see you. Blah blah blah. Well, guess what? She started fucking other people too. So it's like, to me, it's like, okay, I finally met somebody who gets me. Somebody who understands me. And, 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 oh, and, and it's just like, this is great. Finally, I found the one. Nah. That fucked me up really bad too. So at this point, I'm like, fuck it. I'm done dating. Well, not done dating. I'm done falling in love. I'm done with this shit. And what did I learn out of that? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I jumped in head first on that with her. Like, there was no, like, feeling out area. It's like, okay, is this going to work or not? No, I went all in on this fucking bitch. Dropped my guard. All of that shit. And I shouldn't have. I really shouldn't have. So I'm like, okay, screw it. So, what I learned about all of this stuff is that it seems like it's the end of the world. And believe me, it is for that moment in time. And it takes a long time to get over that shit. And at the end of the day... The only person that's going to love you is yourself. It's not your job to make someone else happy and it's not their job to make you happy. You have to make you happy. You need to find those things that make you happy and don't compromise on 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 your standards and your and your wants. There's no such thing as needs. I need this, I need that. 
If you have needs, it's up to you to fulfill those needs. Don't put that on someone else's shoulders or anything like that. If you could count on one hand some good friends that, that can support you in all of this stuff, everything that you're going through, it's that that's all you really need, man. That's all you really need in life. It's always good. Those wounds are always going to be there. But they're going to heal up and you're going to have scars. But at the same time, man, I'll tell you, I found what I was looking for when I gave up looking. When I was confident being single and alone and happy, you put that energy out there and that attracts the same kind of vibe and energy and and I met my wife on a blind date. I had one foot out the door. I was moving back. I was moving back. I was going to move to Australia. She was going to move back to Oregon. And fucking here I am now. <laughs> um, she's incredible. And I'm very happy to have met her. But I tell you what. If it weren't for those fucking cunts that stepped on my heart and fucking broke it. I wouldn't have learned the things. I wouldn't have gotten any. I'm glad. I'm glad that they that it happened because I got a lot out of it. I learned a lot about myself and what I don't want in a relationship. So, getting back to Annette, had things worked out with us, and we ended up getting married and living up in Washington State. I don't know what kind of life I'd be living. I wouldn't have fucking made my bucket list and traveled and done the adventures, uh, had the adventures I've had. Um, I would have never put on a suit of armor, hopped on a horse and charged at somebody with a lance. I would have never gotten to a wrestling ring. I never would have been on a thousand ways to die. And I never would have walked into a target and saw the turd that was about the same size, girth, length, circumference of a Pringles can. Maybe a bit bigger. So if you reach the end of this video, I hope that I at least put a smile on your face and was a, was a ray of sunshine through a dark stormy cloud for you. You're going to get through this. Trust your Uncle Jay. High fives and boners. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. All that stuff. As you can see, my jerky is going to marinate until tomorrow. So, on that note, high fives and boners. And each, each day the sun's going to come up. And it's just take it day by day, minute by minute if you have to. If things get fucking real bad, call the suicide prevention hotline. Call that number. Call the, 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 the Hall of Notes emergency hotline. I've done that. Call the notes. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything irrational. Just, just fucking just take it one day at a time. And know that it's, it's going to go by. It's going to pass. Each storm blows through and then it's done. So... But learn about a lot about yourself and what not you, what uh, what you don't want in a relationship, and don't compromise. Don't don't see some red flags and be like, well, eh, I'll still date her. No, you don't buy a car with a bad motor, do you? So, anyways, in conclusion, I hope I helped you with this advice. Do the things that make you happy. Get some exercise. Get out there and hang out with your friends. It's it's going to be better. So, all right. High fives and boners. I'm out of here. See you.